What's up guys, Tommy Bowyer here from Movie Rewind and today I will be ranking my family. So without further ado, let's get into it. So My Family is a British sitcom. It was created by Fred Barron and starred Robert Lindsay and Zoe Wanamaker as two parents looking after their three children and just trying to get through normal life. I think it's a very underrated comedy programme. Despite being quite a long-running comedy programme, it's one of only 12 British sitcoms as of the present day to reach the 100 episode mark and I don't think people talk about it or appreciate it as much as they should and as it is reaching the 20th anniversary of when this show started end airing I thought that I would do a series ranking from worst to best so I'm just going to talk about that right now I would say you will probably have more enjoyment with this ranking if you have seen my family however you might understand it if you haven't so let's get on with the ranking <music> So in last place is Series 11. Now, Series 11 is the weakest of the My Family series because you can tell everyone just looks tired, exhausted and bored in this. A lot of the comedy in this series falls flat and you can tell that the main cast don't really want to be there anymore. I think that Series 11 is definitely the series which shouldn't have been made because it's not it's just not a funny series there's nothing interesting about it and it by this point it had stayed too long as a comedy program and that really shows in this last series <laughs> Next up is Series 10. Now, if Series 9 started to resuscitate the, the franchise, then Series 10 decided to pull the plug because Series 10 is a massive letdown from the previous series. The majority of jokes in Series 10 do fall flat. The only good thing in it is Robert Lindsay and Zoe Wanamaker's performances. You can tell that they are still semi-invested in the roles at least. However, I think that the writing problems really started to show in Series 10. They were running out of ideas and running out of ways to continue to make the show relevant and funny. So I put Series 10 on this list because it is slightly better than Series 11. However, in terms of what came before, it is still a pretty poor series. <laughs> Next up is Series 8. Now, Series 8 is a shorter series compared to what came before it. However, this uh, series does have some strong episodes in it. I especially like the finale of this series, The Abbey Habit, which of course sees the departure of Siobhan Hayes in the role of Abby Harper. I always liked Abby's character and she does get and a good exit here and actually it's a pretty emotional exit between Abby and her, her husband Roger. I thought that was one of the times my family actually got a little bit emotional and a bit sad. So I like series 8 mainly for the ending because it just does such a good job with the departure of Abby's character. Despite from this it does have a few episodes which while they're okay they're not really laugh out loud humour however it deals with its humour a lot better than some of the later series so that is why I've put it at this position on the list. <laughs> Next on the list is Series 7. Now, Series 7 probably has one of the most famous My Family episodes when the characters go on Weakest Link, which is actually a really strong episode. I actually really enjoy that one. The majority of episodes in Series 7 are actually pretty funny. The character of Alfie Butts gets a lot more to do in Series 7 than he did in Series 6, and I think he's a lot more funnier in this series. I feel like the actor and the writers better use his character and utilise him as a character in the series and I think he fits into the dynamics of the family really well. Of course we get a high point in the love story between Abby and Roger as they get married. That's a great uh, moment in their love story and it feels really deserved after a couple of series of building this relationship up. I enjoy series 7. It has a lot of standout moments in it which are very important in my family's uh, history and storyline. So I enjoy series 7. I think it's a really strong series. <laughs> 
number seven, I have put series six. Now, series six is probably a lot more somber than the previous series. The humour is a lot more downbeat, and it seems that they are trying to do something different with the humour in this series to try and separate it from what came before it. I think the main problem with Series 6 is that there's a massive void because, of course, Chris Marshall left his uh, role of Nick Harper in Series 5, so he's not present in Series 6. And I think you can tell that um, he leaves such a void that Series 6 does kind of struggle with that. They introduce the character of Alfie Butts as a full-time regular in Series 6, and I don't think they understood his character yet. I don't think they really knew how to use him yet and he's kind of just there. He doesn't really have a lot to do. I mean that problem does get sorted out in later series however I just I don't think that they really knew what to do with him here. You get the continuation of Abby and Roger's relationship and I think that works really well. It's nice to see them together for once. Of course in the previous series they were building up this relationship however they weren't together. In this series they are together. I enjoy series six. I think it's a lot more thought through. I think the writing they really did try to do something different. The main problem with Series 6 is there is a bit of a void left because Chris Marshall isn't in the series anymore and I think they were just trying to figure out how they would continue My Family without him. Series 9 is next on my list and actually this series buckles the trend because if you have noticed I have been ranking all of the series uh, lower so as the series progresses they gradually lose quality. However, that is not what happens with Series 9. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because the writers understood the characters or the cast were more invested or the episodes were just genuinely funnier. Because Series 9 is probably a great series. It is one. It is a very surprising series for me because I didn't expect this series to be very good because I thought that it was start my family was staying too long and series 9 would just fall into obscurity it doesn't it holds up really well the character of alfie is brilliant in series 9 they really understand him now and he's actually my favorite character in series 9 because they just use him to his full potential here and i really can't understand why he weren't kept on for series 10 and series 11 because i honestly think he would have made those series a lot better as i previously said the cast are great in series 9 and this and the writers just seem to be able to write a lot better comedy in this series. So series 9 is a diamond in the rough in terms of the later My Family series because it stands out as just a really strong series. At number 5 is series 1, the original series. Now, I have a lot of respect for series 1 because of course it was the first series so it lays all of the foundations for the next 10 series. I think that the actors they picked to portray the characters are just perfect casting. Robert Lindsay and Zoe Wanamaker are brilliant as Ben and Susan Harper. Chris Marshall, Daniela um, Denby Ash and Gabriel Thompson are great as Nick, Janie and Michael, the children. The standout performance is of course Chris Marshall as Nick Harper. He is absolutely fantastic in the role and he does make these episodes so much better. He is the funniest part of series one. Series one, you can tell that they haven't got the formula down to form yet. You can tell that they're still trying to figure out exactly what characters work best and how they can make each character funnier. So series one, there's a lot of learning going on. They're trying to understand the characters a lot more. However, it is Nick Harper which makes this series so much more better. <laughs> Series 5 is a really strong series. It has some great episodes in it and all of the cast are fantastic in their roles. It does feature the last appearance of Nick Harper. Uh, personally speaking, I wish they gave him a proper send-off because he was the funniest character in my family. So I wish that they gave him a proper send-off, but sometimes you can't persuade actors to stay on and have a proper send-off. So it's not my family's fault, I suppose. It's just one of those things. Series 5 is a strong uh, set of episodes that I really enjoy and I find really funny. So that's why I've placed it at this position on the list. <music> series 2 is a significant improvement on Series 1 because I think that the cast better understand their characters and you can really sense that there's a 
lot more of a family relationship between them now. This series does contain more episodes of series one, so I think you have longer to um, understand the characters. There are some great episodes in series two. Everything in series two is exactly what a second series should do. It explores more about the characters, it adds more depth to them, and of course the writing is just a lot better because I think now that they understand the characters, they could um, use the comedy a lot better. And that makes the episodes a very higher standard than series one. So series two is a really great series, a significant improvement on the first. <laughs> just missing out on the top spot is series three. Series three changes a lot of the stuff that had occurred in series one and series two. We see the semi-departure of Janie, uh, which I actually think is not that bad because it means that the episodes that she appears in are a lot more special because she is in it. So I think that works really well. And it was interesting seeing her at university, you get some great episodes involving uh, Ben and Susan going to the university and I, I just find them episodes really funny. We see Abby introduced in this series and she is a fantastic addition to the cast. Such a quirky character and Siobhan Hayes plays her really well so it's great to see uh, Abby introduced in this series. And I would say that Nick is probably near the top of his game in this series. There are some great episodes with Nick in and it's just fantastic. He's just brilliant. And I have to say Robert Lindsay and Zoe Wanamaker share a great uh, relationship and chemistry on screen and it's just great seeing all of the cast on screen you can tell in series 3 they were having a great time filming it and they really enjoyed it so series 3 has some really strong episodes some really funny moments in and it also introduces a great new character in the form of Abby <laughs> at number one is series four now series four in my personal opinion is the pinnacle of my family's success if i had to recommend a my family series to anyone who was like a first time watcher who wanted to understand what the series was about i would definitely pick series four because it contains some amazing episodes in it canary cage when they go on holiday to spain is a fantastic episode a really funny episode October the 31st, the Hall or Friday the 31st, I should say, uh, when they go and it's Halloween. Such a great episode. There's just so many standout episodes in Series 4. The cast are at their peak in this series because they all have a great chemistry on screen. They all work really well. And you can really see the family dynamics in this series, which is what my family is all about. We get the introduction of Roger in this series and his kind of annoyance with um he annoys Ben so much and that so we see that starting and that's really funny in the early days. I love series four. It's a great My Family series and I would definitely recommend it. So thanks for watching guys. I really do hope that you enjoyed my ranking of my family. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. Remember to comment any way I can improve and I will see you in another one. See ya!